Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting equation with z, z bar and the absolute value. What is z bar? If z is a complex number, its complex conjugate is denoted by z bar, which is right here. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made a playlist of basics of complex numbers. So you can go ahead and check them out. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comment section down below. So we have this equation where z, z bar and absolute value of z are all mixed up, which is one of my favorite types of equations. Let's see how, in how many ways we can mix these up to make up new equations, because I like making up new equations. If you have any ideas, please let us know again in the comment section down below. There's also a form you can find in the description where you can submit, but writing in the comment section will be a faster way to uh, get my attention. So how do we solve these kinds of equations? Well, you can first of all notice that z and z bar are related. So what is z? z is a complex number. So we can go ahead and write it as a plus bi, which is also the name of this channel. By the way, I have another channel called Cyber Math, in case you didn't know, because sometimes people say, oh, I didn't know you were Cyber Math. Well, if you watched both of my channels, you could probably tell, right? But anyways, uh, I do uh, number theory videos, I do algebra videos, and a little bit of geometry. I'm thinking about a nice geometry problem. Hopefully, I can uh, have some time to draw, because I use Desmos to draw those, and sometimes it takes a while. Some people use GeoGebra, but I'm not good at it. Anyways, that's a different story. So, z equals a plus pi, and from here, by definition, z bar becomes a minus bi. So, z bar, or the complex conjugate of z, is a special number such that when you multiply by z, you got a real number. When you add to z, you got a real number. And that's unique because only one number can satisfy given z. z bar is unique. Okay? Cool, cool. Now, what about the absolute value? The absolute value is actually the distance from zero. If you plot a complex number real quick like this, let's say... This is the argument theta, this is a, this is b, and we're always using quadrant one, even though we don't have to be in there, but that's such standard and easy to understand. Basically, the distance from zero is given by the Pythagorean theorem, which is the square root of a squared plus b squared. Make sense? This is also called r, so you can safely say that r squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, from which this follows. Okay? Cool, cool. Now, what are we going to do with t's? plug everything in. Let's do it. That's going to be fun, right? You don't even know what, what's going to happen. I do know that this equation is going to... By the way, I did not solve the problem myself because I came up with the problem, so I kind of went backward. But now you're going to go forward and you're going to understand my reasoning, okay? How I came up with the right-hand side. Automatically came up. So z bar is a minus bi plus z is a plus bi. And then we're going to multiply it by the absolute value, which is the square root uh -oh, of a squared plus b squared. And that should equal 24 minus 12i. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and see what we can do here. We can definitely distribute because we have to do it. You know what? If two complex numbers are equal, let's just say uh, a plus bi is equal to c plus di. This implies two things, a equals to c, a equals c, or b equals d. And actually, not or, both of them has to happen. Make sense? So we're going to have to put uh, separate the real and imaginary parts, a minus bi, distribute to a, you're going to get this, and then distribute to b, you're going to get i times that, right? That'll give us the imaginary part. So now let's go ahead and put this together. Uh, these are real parts, so a plus a times the square root of a squared plus b squared plus i times b times the square root of a squared plus b squared minus b. And that'll be the coefficient of i, which is the imaginary part. And this is going to bug me forever, so let me go ahead and fix it. When the minus sign touches 1, it kind of looks like, especially when you're like writing 1 minus 1, doesn't that look like an h sometimes if you're fast and like if you're not, if you're rushing. Anyways. So, what are we going to do? Real parts are equal. So, this equals 24 and this equals negative 12. You can also negate and set it equal to 12, which is something that I usually do. I just like it that way, okay? So, let's see what this gives us. A plus A times the square root of A squared plus B squared is equal to 24. 
and b minus b times the square root of a squared plus b squared equals 12 because I negated it so now it's 12. Make sense? Cool, cool. Now how do you solve from here? That's a good question. I could probably do the following. I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to help but from here we could probably take out an a and write this as follows. Even though we're not going to get the same thing inside the parentheses we could still get away with a good uh, solution here. Take out the b. Uh, like I said earlier, I haven't solved the problem, so I'm not exactly sure. But hopefully we're going to be able to proceed with that, okay? So now, here, uh, you can try to divide these equations and come up with um, a over b. But is a over b going to help us? Let's think about it. Oh, one thing I can probably think of, I'm not sure if it's going to help, but... Maybe set b over a equal to a constant. Like how about b over a is equal to k? Let's see if it's going to help. I can replace b with a k. And that's going to give me a k plus. And you know what? I could use the factored version. It's probably better. Uh, so I have an a outside, which means it's going to be a. And then b will be replaced with. Okay, let's do this. Uh, let's do it with the absolute value. So we can only do it once. It's kind of lazy here. Uh, a squared plus a squared k squared. Yes, a comes out. Uh, and of course, if a is negative, it's a different story. I'm just going to assume a is positive in this case first. And we're going to have the square root of 1 plus k squared. Okay, so I was kind of able to write it uh, as a multiple of a, which is nice. And then from here, we get the following. a times 1 plus a times this equals 24. And in the second equation, b is going to be a k multiplied by 1 minus a times the square root of 1 plus k squared. And this may or may not give me a good solution. I'm not sure, but I'm going to test it out anyways. Divide these equations. a cancels out. And then these two don't cancel out. So we're going to end up with two variables. And this is going to be a 2. But I don't think that's going to be helpful. Um, I doubt it. Okay, so I don't think this is going to help. Maybe I'm missing something. So I'm going to go back and try a different approach. Again, so we're kind of learning as we go. Uh, so, and you kind of see my thought process too, right? Uh, because it's not like with a script or something that I already have the solution in front of me. But I'm going to kind of... Oops, I erased everything. Anyways, I can write it again. So how do we solve such a system? I think my second approach would be to, I think, um, let's see. If I can subtract these equations, that's going to give me a minus b and a plus b. Again, that's not going to be helpful. So I don't think we can manipulate that way. Why don't we just try to get rid of the radical? Okay, one thing we can do is, I believe this is going to help. Isolating the radical. This expression is common. So from the first equation, this is the first, I can get this equals 24 minus a and then divide both sides by a and we'll get that. And from the second equation, we're gonna get b times this, because I'm putting it on the right hand side and bringing the 12 over like this way and that way. It's gonna be b minus 12 divided by b, right? Okay, cool. Now uh, we can divide by b and yeah, b, b will disappear. Now I got the same thing, awesome. Then from here, we can set those equal to each other because uh, two things are equal to the same thing. That means they're equal. These two things are equal. 24 minus a over a equals b minus 12 over b. And to make things a little easier, I think if we separate this into this, this will probably be a little better. And now we can kind of write it as 24 over a equals 2 minus 12 over b. And then from here, we can make a common denominator. We, we kind of have to, we end up uh, making a common denominator anyways. And then we flip both sides. And then from here, multiply both sides by 20. And basically, my goal is to get uh, one variable in terms of the other. Make sense? Okay, great. So I think I was successful. I was able to get A in terms of B. Now, this is something I can use in one of these equations. Which one? Doesn't matter, no big deal. I'll probably go with one of the originals, like maybe equation one, a plus a times, uh, and probably not to repeat a over, uh, we're gonna factor out the a again, and that'll give me one plus the square root. Okay, cool. 
and then that should equal 24 if I remember correctly, right? And now we're gonna go ahead and replace A with that. Good. 24B over 2B minus 12, 2B or not 2B, uh, to say that. And then A squared is gonna be 24B over 2B minus 12 squared plus B squared. Uh-oh, this is gonna get ugly. Equals 24, I didn't realize it was gonna get this ugly. Anyways, so now from here, uh, we're gonna be able to, are we gonna be able to solve it? I don't know, we'll see. Maybe we probably should get rid of the radical at some point, did we? Uh, you know what, uh, I could probably do this. Uh, take equation number one and get rid of the radical first and then plug it in. That looks like a better idea. So let me do that. Uh, do I have pages? Okay, good. It looks like I have a little bit more room. And this one uh, should be, ta -da -da, there's another A and there's a 24, okay. There's another A and there's a 24, cool. Now let's get rid of the radical. Uh, we already that, did that, but I think uh, we can go ahead and do it again. 24 minus A over A. Now square both sides, that'll give you, you know what, if you get stuck, I'll just show you the solution, I mean the answer. It's like, okay, the numerator is just gonna be 576 plus a squared minus 48a divided by a squared, beautiful. And then we're gonna get an a to the fourth. So what we can do with that is um, we can go ahead and use these two equations together. a equals 24b, 24b divided by 2b minus 12. Okay, great, 2b minus 12. And now what I can do with this is I could probably just plug this in here and here and here so many places or just isolate, maybe I can isolate b squared from this equation first. So it's gonna be 576 plus a squared minus 48a divided by a squared minus a squared. That'll actually come up as an a to the fourth, so we can kind of do it like this. There you go. And whether you like it or not, this is b squared in terms of a squared or a, and then this can be substituted somewhere like along with this one. No, actually I already used it. Yeah, this one. Okay, that's gonna be a lot of work, but as you can see, it's taken a while. Here me, here's the solution, let me show you. And there's probably an easier way to do it. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.